Hey, it's all good Sam here. Welcome to another episode of the Spilt Ink Podcast. I've got more patrons, and the pledges have passed over hundred dollars a month now. So awesome! Uh, thanks to my newest patrons, Andrew Walsh and Tony Carlson. Andrew uh, pledged the one that put it over the top on hundred dollars, and I promised this morning that I would do a little sketch portrait of whoever uh, did that. And so he gets a quick sketch portrait, and I'm going to do one for Tony too because he made it two in a day, and I'm feeling generous. So. Um, that's amazing. Uh, I was asked on uh, Facebook by Andrew J. Hawthorne about narrative techniques or figure of tricks that you can only do in comics. And that seemed like a good topic to do for this episode of the podcast. So given the visual nature of this subject, I'm going to do my best to articulate these ideas verbally, but this will be one of the episodes of the podcast that will definitely have a YouTube version. Uh, check the description text for links uh, and visual references to the things I describe. As a fan of both mediums, I actually don't think that they're all that mutually exclusive in terms of narrative techniques, but there are definitely some distinct properties between the two of them that are an outcome of their physical differences. Um, so, you know, and likewise, there are things that film can do that comics just don't simply because of the physical properties, but I'm going to stick to comics. So the first one that came to mind that seems most obvious is the page turn. It's the most immediate example that comes to mind. It's a phenomenon of being a book uh, with pages. You, you can't really completely recreate the physical experience of that by simulating it on a screen. Uh, you can only depict it. Um, it's like a kind of cut. Uh, suggestible with a white, perhaps, but there is a literal rounding of a perceptual corner as you lift the page and reveal a new spread. Uh, it's both opportunity and constraint for a comic artist. One happens every two pages, and uh, a good one for anyone new to exploring the medium in terms of learning or reading the comics, for that matter, uh, to to study uh, in terms of understanding and application, and also the reading of it. Um, Web comics have the click, and in some ways potentially scrolling, but each is their own variation of the reveal, um, just as a cinematic reveal is its own unique uh, experience. It isn't quite the same thing as the printed page experience of both sort of a, a facing page reveal where you can see it coming and the complete reveal of a page turn. Um, another I personally like that also comes to mind has some cinematic cousins, but it's it's pretty unique to static narrative art. Uh, a collage-like use of the space to build complex montage narrative with a, a snakes and ladders approach to leading the eye. It's something I think I first started thinking about myself as a young developing artist um, from looking at and revisiting formless insights uh, from Bill Sinkovich, whose work I had uh, first fallen in love with a reader, as a reader. I still have the old floppies of New Mutants. Uh, they're all dog-eared and worn down with love. Uh, he and Dave McKean, Neil Adams as well uh, at one point, and then Baron Story uh, attracted my interest and respect in looking at composing pages in non-linear fashions, uh, along with many others that I, I probably am forgetting. Uh, later, though, I would see Sergio Topi, and he did a, a particularly amazing uh, variation on the idea that I feel quite uh, sympathetic to in terms of my own ideas. Uh, but I would name the most influential of all, not a comic artist, but Diego Rivera, the painter. Uh, after walking into the DIA for the first time, I stopped in my tracks and uh, took in the Detroit industry fresco cycle. Uh, that, that graces the entrance uh, hall for the DIY, sorry, the DIA. And uh, for a couple of years immediately after, I studied it and his other narrative collages that had deep linear and nonlinear narrative content, uh, trying to read about the backstories behind them, the intended messages so I could better understand them and what he was trying to do, led me to having a lot better grasp of what I was doing in my comics uh, when I would break page reading conventions and depart from the grid altogether. Um, it's become a bit of a, a playful and rewarding obsession of mine over the years to explore aspects of that and, and 
other techniques that relate to it. Try to capture something the way I personally experience things rather than just using the boxes. Uh, to point to a particular example, page 89 in Dream Life, A Late Coming of Age, titled The Roots of Violence. It's a personal favorite example of my attempts at trying to warp perception of space and time and experience on the page to convey a sense of physicality and, and motion in a sequence, in this case, f of five physically interwoven moments. Um, film has very literal ways of depicting the same things, but they generally still occur framed in a consistent frame. Uh, in many ways, I find very formless comics that only employ grids, page layouts actually, to be, in some respects, more like films, certainly more like storyboards, uh, because of that constraint. And I think that, you know, this kind of composition approach to page design is one way of getting away from those constraints. Uh, you're still confined by the dimensions of the page, to, in a sense, but uh, I think perceptually you can really do interesting things with it. And when you consider the variability of page design itself, well, the possibilities get really quite large uh, with the really interesting recent example of Chris Ware's Building Stories which is a remarkable sequential narrative visual art storytelling thing that isn't really quite a book, but it is a graphic novel. Um, so that's my two bits about unique properties of comics in terms of narrative techniques. Thanks for listening. Like the podcast, uh, wherever you find it, share it with your friends, and uh, help me let people know about what I'm doing here. If you are interested in supporting in a more materialistic way, getting all this stuff done, check out the Spilting Patreon page. Thanks again to Andrew Walsh and Tony Carlson, along with Michelle Darwin, Emil Underbeer, Underbeer? I think it's Underbeer, Tim Mormon, Ian Hodgkinson, Hodgkinson <laughs> and Shannon Becker. Uh, plus, two secretive souls that take no thanks. Merci beaucoup to you all. Salgut Samad. Have a good week. <laughs>